Dear students, as you have learned that how to apply the Cochrane Skew test, and what type of procedure you need to follow under SPSS to apply this Cochrane Skew test. So you have already learned that once we have opened up the SPSS window, you would be entering the required number of treatments, or you call them as variables. Under the variable view, then you have uh, learned that how to enter the data under those variables. Uh, you have all already uh, familiar with the procedure that you would have to follow to obtain the p-value of the Cochrane Q test. So by taking that p-value, you can decide upon whether to accept or reject a null hypothesis. So students, the example I'm going to consider, it was a study by Gustafsson et al. They have conducted this study in 1973 in order to compare the abilities of four computed computer-aided diagnostic systems. And the data was being uh, carried out onto 11 hypothyroid patients. That was a case of matching sample. And we were required to test hypothesis that whether all four diagnostic methods that were being considered, are they giving us the same results or they are giving us uh, different results. So after following the SPSS procedure, for obtaining the Cochrane skew test students as you can see that descriptive statistics are being shown before you this is the window output window of SPSS it is showing us the means along with the standard deviations further although the standard deviations are not required to us but if you just look into the next table the values are being the frequencies of uh, being getting a zeros and ones is being given so under the majority opinion there were Zero value was appearing twice, whereas nine times the value one was appearing and so on for the rest of the treatments. You can see the frequencies that are being calculated under Cochrane test. The value that we are interested in is the Cochrane's Q value along with its P value. As you can see that the SPSS has reported the P value as 0 0.053. Now we would be picking up this P value in order to decide whether to accept or reject our nalipos. Now the information to remember here is that uh, uh, SPSS has taken, has considered the one value as being the success whereas the zero value was being taken as the failure. So students after observing this P value we need to outline all procedure steps for testing the hypothesis for the Cochrane Q test. So under H0 we would uh, be taking the statement that the four methods of diagnosing they provide us with the same result whereas the alternative is that there might be certain uh, differences that exist between the four treatment methods then the next step is to decide upon alpha it was five percent in our case test statistic is the q and as you can see that as far as the output window of the species is being considered species has calculated the value of q and against that Q value, the asymptotic P value is being calculated as 0 0.053. Now, by taking this P value, students, we can decide upon uh, our rejection region, which in our case would be that we would have to reject our nulliposis if our P value, which is the probability of the extreme, it is less than our desired observed P value, which is alpha. So, in our case, it is 0 0.05. So the p-value that we have obtained by following the procedure under SPSS that comes out to be 0 0.053 and as you can see students it is greater than 0 0.05 in other words we can say that it does not fall into our rejection region so we can accept our hypothesis null hypothesis which is H0 and we can conclude that the four methods of diagnosing the particular thyroid patients they yield the same results. So that means they are not different as far as the treatments are concerned. The proportion of success in this case is same across all the treatments.